and I have been, I'll be honest, deeply disappointed and somewhat concerned as I have read, and I was talking to Michael Laws yesterday about the turnouts down in central Otago um, for local body elections. I think there's actually been quite a lot of coverage of, of local body elections, not all of it good. There has been the woke media's sort of campaign looking for Nazis that don't exist through Voices for Freedom and stuff. Um, but let's be honest, um, there isn't, we're not actually gripped by local body elections or by, lo by local body politics. And, well, it appears that the turnouts are pretty bad. And maybe that's got something to do with it being a postal ballot. ballot I don't know. To find out what the figures are, and actually to encourage you to get involved and vote, um, we are joined now by Stuart Crosby um, from Local Government New Zealand. Stuart, uh, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, Sean. All right, Stuart, uh, from what's happening so far, can we have an average turnout, voter turnout so far, and where are the worst places in the country? Where do people really not give a stuff about these elections? It's pretty grim, Sean. Um, last night I, was, I saw some figures as low as uh, 12%, 13 14%. Whoa. Uh, in some major, major areas, too, like Hutt City, as an example, um, right through to Christchurch, which is going quite well at the moment, but still quite poor at around 35%, uh, and everything in between. It's, 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 not, it's not good. So, so we would say... <sighs> So from 12, to, where's the 12 to 14% turnouts? I think that one was actually in Pari, one of the Hutt cities. Hutt cities, oh uh, wow. From memory. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Which traditionally didn't, never polled particularly well either, but yeah. you know, there, there is a kick at the end. Um, there's always a kick at the beginning, um, steady through the middle of the election period and then a boost at the end. So uh, mm. let's certainly hope we get that boost Okay, so end. I just want to clarify how long... Now, it's, it's postal ballots everywhere. Um, how long have people got, in reality, to get their votes in? What's the deadline or the cut-off point? The absolute deadline is uh, 12 o'clock uh, on Saturday afternoon, the 8th this coming Saturday, but do not post your vote, I'd suggest, from today onwards. Okay, because um, it's, no, it's not going to get through. No, it's just not going to get through. There are three and a half million votes went out, and we know the Postal Service has really struggled throughout this. So take it into your local council, your library, post shop, uh, and some supermarkets. Okay. Also councils, I just want to say councils, libraries, Post shop. Post shop. Uh, and it, some supermarkets as well, yeah. Yeah, okay. But if you're unsure, just bring your council and they'll certainly let you know where okay. the closest ballot box to home is. You know, I look at that. Even Christchurch, uh, God bless Christchurch, at 35% uh, turnout. It really is kind of damaging to the idea of democracy because how much you look at someone who is elected by majority, more than 50% of 35%, of a catchment, right? And you say, how can you actually say you represent the people when that... Th I suppose democracy is for those who, who take part, isn't it, uh, Stuart? But that really does kind of call into question the credibility of the system, doesn't it? Uh, look, it does, and we've been asking for various changes, at least for 12 years, and people are and myself are saying, look, there are a lot of reasons why, but what we need to do post this election immediately is some really in-depth research to get some clear understanding as to what the barriers are or why people aren't voting. Yes, we have an antiquated postal system. Would electronic support uh, the uptake? I'm not sure. You know who stops that, of course, is actually the GCSB, the government oh, they say, yeah, yeah, and I've heard yeah. this. This has emerged, this narrative has emerged, is that they say it would be open to manipulation. I find it hard to think that the FCFB in Russia are interested in manipulating the election results in Stokes Valley. Well, that, that, that's right, but what GCSB is saying, and it's an indictment probably on our own um, safety and security, yet we do millions of dollars of banking, every billions of dollars of banking every day, yeah. is that they would use that as a funnel to the government and, and then the five eyes, which uh. I find a bit strange. But Well, I look, actually, is, that's you know, a really good... Stuart, that's such a good point you make. 
we couldn't possibly have a voting system that's electronically based, but we have an entire financial system. I mean, I can't remember the last time I, ha I handled a piece of cash, you know, or, a, you know, a $20 note or anything. So well, that's right. And it's good enough. Yeah. If it's good enough for our entire financial system to be run off computer, I guess our motor vehicle registration system, our court system, and we're saying we can't have a voting system that at least uses it in part. That is crazy, isn't it? Well, it is. You know, we in 2016, we got really close to running some trials. Council had volunteer, volunteered to run some trials, electronic voting trials, alongside, you know, the postal, and that got canned. We had another crack in 2019, and that got canned. It's so frustrating. Yeah, and the But I don't thing, think that's the only issue, Sean. Yeah, well, what's, there what, are, what are the other issues? Uh, you, you know, um, I, today, or this particular election, has been very strange. Uh, we're the first uh, election post-COVID. Uh, you know, people are absolutely focused on, you know, cost of living, inflation, yeah. just getting on with life at the moment. I think that's got a lot to do with it. Age and demographics, you know. Um, I've been encouraging my nieces and nephews who are in their mid-30s to vote, some of them for the first time. So, oh, look, there's too many candidates. We don't understand who they are. There's not enough information. How can I tell the quality of a candidate from 150 words in a book? Well, go to a meeting, for goodness sake. <laughs> really? So, um, there are a range of issues, um, and we need to find out what those issues are mm. and uh, find them some solutions you know civics and schools we're pushing for that so young people can start to understand you know their right to elect people and to influence uh, decisions that will impact yeah. on them for basically their whole life yeah. Stuart looking back historically um, when was the highest when were people most engaged in local body politics and has it ever been this bad before it's never been this bad before at okay. this point in any any election Normally, the central government elections, um, which is another issue, you know, you actually have to physically go and poll yourself, uh, hover around 70 and 80 percent, whereas local has always been about uh, 20 or 15 to 20 percent behind that in the good days. Yeah. Uh, but we've been slipping backwards, I would suggest, for the last three or four elections. And this looks like... Probably it's going to be the worst in our history. So the worst turnout in local body elections in the history of this country. Well, well, I'm sorry, the GCSB have to get their foot off that break. We need to look okay. at we need to look at every option to get people re-engaged. Uh, to my mind, well, we in do, democracy, sure. yeah, 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 we do. You know, people have died for this in, in mm. years gone by uh, to make sure that, you know, we do have, um, you know, a, a democratic system. And New Zealand actually does have one of the best in the world, it's probably the less corrupt one. Mm. Um, and, we, you know, we must, um, you know, take advantage of that and support it and use it. So there's a lot of work to be done post this election, mm. in my view, and I hope the government of the day, and we don't care who it is, actually helps address uh, this yeah. issue. Stuart, I'm getting a ton of texts through from people saying, I didn't get my voting papers. What do I do if I want to vote? You can still make a special vote, Sean. Uh, you'd have to do that in person at uh, your local council. So uh, go down there, you go through the registration system, you'd get a voting paper and you'd be able to vote. Okay, so you've got to do that in person. Okay, there you go for everyone, and a lot of you have said I want a special vote. All right, look, one other thing, Stuart, we do have a lawyer on on this later. I see Lord, I see Lord got into a little bit of trouble for taking a picture of her voting paper and putting it online uh, and had a visit from the Electoral Commission or someone. Um, the Prime Minister has taken a picture of her at a voting place and said who she's voting for. Um, does it concern you? such flippant disregard for the laws of our land. That's quite interesting. I actually was unaware of that uh, particular law as well until our returning officer let the candidates know you cannot uh, take a picture of your voting paper with you know who you're voted for and post it online. Yeah. Uh, so I, I became aware of it about, I don't know, three weeks ago. Prior to that, yeah. I, I had no idea myself. So I, I look, again, more work to be done on the rights and wrongs of what you can and can't do uh, through an election period. Yeah, all right. Look, I know you guys have done a good job. It is dreadfully, dreadfully disappointing, uh, that turnout. Uh, it really, really is. And... 
as I say, it, what it, it damages the whole system, Stuart, because people will turn around to their mayor and say, oh, if only 52% of, you know, 20% of the people in this area voted for you as mayor or as a councillor, why should I give you any authority? It kind of damages the system, doesn't it? Well, it does. You know, I thought about that yesterday when I was asked by by another reporter, you know, it's not the candidate's fault. They've done their part. Yep. They've stood up. They've put their name forward. Um, and whatever the voting turnout is under our system, they are elected and get the mandate. It's really up to the populace now, you know, to put their hand up and use the democratic system and vote. And you have till midday on Saturday. Don't post yes. from now on. Get down to a post shop, a li public library... Um, post shops and in some cases supermarkets and if you want to do a special vote go to your local council in person and they'll sort that that's the way to go all right hey Stuart thank you so much for your time and the good work you people do thank you very much indeed that is Stuart Crosby from local government New Zealand we are launching our own probe into whether or not the Prime Minister is a criminal and in result <laughs> you do have to understand my sense of humour sometimes uh, folks Oh, come on, it's worth a crack, uh, isn't it? Have you voted yet? And if not, why not? If not, why not? Uh, Hutt City, 12 to 14% voter turnout. Why bother? Why don't we just put, I don't know, a chicken wire fence around Hutt Valley and just declare it some other country?